And he was more specifically talking in this sense of the ruble going on to a new gold standard. Your experience as a bank director and your years of research into the financial and monetary systems gives you a lot of credence that our viewers are eager to take advantage of when hearing your your uh, perspectives and your analyses of what's going on in our financial world. Uh, most recently, uh, you've done some additional research into the phenomenon of gold weakness in the face of all this financial mismanagement that's been going on and what that might signify. Uh, but first, could we touch on a topic that's been in the news currently, and that's whether there'll be a re ignition of conflict in the Ukraine. And we've certainly seen that that sparked a lot of activity in the metals, uh, interest in the metals, concern about uh, financial stability in the region, etc. Uh, what are you watching there from your perspective in the UK? Uh, well, it's 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 an interesting question, because um, uh, this is just being recorded, I think, about two or three days after um, the uh, uh, Wagner um, rebellion, if I can call it that. Uh, and the thing that's fascinating about that is that um, it does appear that there's some sort of intelligence role from either the British or the Americans or both. Because according to today's Daily Telegraph, which um, is directly fed, really, by the intelligence services, um, this um, rebellion, revolt, whatever you like to call it, has been known in great detail for some time. This is a, literally a quote from this morning's Telegraph. Uh, so how do they know? Why do they know? I mean, it raises the question as to whether this was actually just um, something that was put up by um, our intelligence services trying to undermine the unity between the shock troops, if I can call them that, um, uh, of the Wagner lot and, um, and uh, the Russian army. So um, that has now been put to bed. And uh, I mean, we don't know for certain. I think it's quite likely that um, the defense ministry in Moscow took the view that um, they have now finished using the Wagner troops, division, whatever you like to call it, uh, and uh, therefore the uh, mercenaries contract has effectively come to an end on that particular um, activity. Now, of course, Wagner does have um, other um, activities uh, for Russia, particularly in the Middle East and also in uh, Africa. Um, they're known to be active in the Sudan, Central African Republic, uh, Chad, um, possibly even Mali. Uh, and um, uh, really, I think their role has now become one of countering uh, the, uh, if you like, the black ops operations uh, run by our intelligence services in those areas. So um, that continues. Uh, and I think that um, the, as I understand it, the um, most of the um, people who have been selected out of the Wagner group um, have now uh, been uh, moved into the army. Now, um, what I would expect is that now that um, uh, uh, well, uh, now that the Ukraine's uh, push um, in the south and east of um, Ukraine to try and recover uh, territory around Donetsk and so on um, has effectively got nowhere, um, I think that um, Putin sees it now as his turn to have a push. And um, bear in mind that um, Kiev is literally only 60 miles from the Belarusian border, where um, the Wagner troops have been um, diverted. Um, I don't know what the strength is of uh, the Russian army there, but there certainly is um, a, a, you know, a reasonable presence there. And I would expect to see a thrust from there uh, and an attempt to capture Kiev. I think this is desperately important because, I mean, the reason I think this is likely to happen in particular is if you look at um, what's been happening to the ruble on the foreign exchanges, what's been happening to bond yields, um, Russian bond yields, uh, and uh, if you look at also at the way in which the um, uh, the balance of payment surplus has been coming down, it's come down really quite dramatically. Uh, you can see that unless Putin acts fairly soon, he could come under 
um, pressure, if you like, as far as his currency, as far as interest rates, and um, obviously uh, um, uh, as, as far as the sort of the overall economy is concerned. Now, um, in order to restore the position, he needs to take an action which will drive up commodity prices to something which uh, gives the Russian economy a decent surplus on its balance of payments. And of course, this would fit in very nicely with um, a counterattack after the failed Ukrainian um, uh, attempt um, uh, to drive the Russians back. Uh, and that counterattack, I believe, will happen in Kiev. In terms of timing, I think it could happen quite quickly uh, for two reasons. Firstly, um, the Ukrainian forces are about 400 miles away, and it will take time for them to be regrouped, if you like, to protect uh, Kiev. That's that's the first thing. The second thing is that um, we have on uh, August the 22nd to the 24th, uh, the new BRICS summit in Johannesburg in South Africa. And uh, I suspect that there will be developments there which will tend to undermine Western currencies. Now, I'm specifically referring to um, what I would suggest is only outline um, proposals, maybe not even that, but a statement that, that of intent uh, about BRICS producing a new uh, trade settlement currency. I mean, to remind everybody, um, a trade settlement currency is currently proposed by um, the Eurasian Economic Union, which, and this is being put together by Sergei Glaziev, who is a very close confidant of uh, Putin and economic advisor. And um, he has moved from the original brief of uh, looking at something which is comprised of uh, the participating nation's currencies and the commodities, which presumably will be weighted in some way to reflect the trade between the EA, EU membership. Now, that was obviously um, not going to happen. And uh, we had um, last December an article written by Sergei Glaziev in uh, a Russian business magazine called uh, Vedomovsky, um, where he quite clearly laid out that the answer to all this is gold. And he was more specifically talking in this sense of the ruble going on to a new gold standard. But clearly, given that it was also co-written by one of his committee members from the EAEU, um, this is something which I think is, um, is, is his current thinking on that project. Now, I would expect that project to be expanded to encompass not just the EAEU, which might have run into political difficulties because of the small number of um, uh, the Central Asian states that are, are, are part of the EAEU, into a wider um, uh, uh, membership. And I think this, this would encompass the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and also um, uh, BRICS. And BRICS is expanding. Uh, there are a number of uh, countries which have actually uh, filed for membership. Um, there are um, a whole host of other countries that uh, have expressed interest uh, either in membership or interest in you know, some sort of association with BRICS. 